Right guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm just going to be showing you how to change out the bearings in your DT Swiss Micro Spline 12 speed freer body. Looks like this. So I'll go ahead and we'll get on with it. Right, so here we have the DT Swiss Micro Spline 12 speed freer body. Now you've got a bearing in the end here. And there's a bearing down inside on the opposite end in there. So you see there's a collar inside between the two bearings, spacer that moves inside there. Now what you want to do is and remove this bearing first on the outside, that's where your cap goes on that covers it. So what you want to do is turn it over and then you can move the collar to one side and there's a lip down inside where the bearing is so you can place a punch on that lip and rest it on there and give it a tap and then move the collar over give it a tap there and so on just carry on round just give it a tap move it like so and the bearing will come out through the end here and you're knocking it down like so so we go ahead I'll do that step first just to show you Right, so what you want to do is get yourself a block of wood on the floor, like so. Then rest your free-out body on the block of wood. Then get your punch, like I said, move the collar to one side, the spacer in there, so you can see the edge of the bearing. And then give it a tap. And then move it again. And give it a tap. And as you're doing that, it doesn't take a lot and the space of collar as the bearing becomes as you start to knock the bearing out the collar becomes loose in the middle as you can see so therefore you can move it right out of the way it's not so much of a it, it's not so much in your way because you can move it around all inside so once you do that you just carry on just give it a few more find the edge of it again Just tap it on out until, it full, until the bearing comes out the bottom. Lift it up, there's the bearing, there's the spacer, the sleeve, and there you have the bearing there. So that's the outside bearing removed, as you can see. You can put that on one side, and then what you need to do is we need to get the bearing that's down in the bottom here. So I'll go ahead, I'll show you how to do that. Right, so to remove the bearing that's down inside the body itself, it's held in with a circlip snap ring. So what you need to do is get yourself some snap ring pliers, find locate the two holes in it, and then squeeze it with your pliers. And what you've got to do is you got to you've got to squeeze it right together because when on the way up it's got to come past if you lift it up and let go of it there's another ridge just at the top edge here that it's got to pass as well so you've got to kept, keep it squeezed together and lift it all the way out without letting go of it because if you let go of it halfway up you'll have to try and get on the circ you have to try and get on the circlip again to be able to uh, to be able to get it out So once you've got it like so, and you can lift it all the way out, you've got to keep it squeezed together. And don't let go of it halfway through. Just make sure it comes all the way out, like so, before you let go of it. So there's a the circlip removed. And now you've got a bearing that's down in there, you can see. So you turn it over. And as you can see, there's an edge there. You can just see the bearing. So what you can go ahead and do now, you've removed the circlip, is just tap on that edge. 
Just work your way around, giving it a tap. Keep doing that until the bearing drops out of the first seat there in the bottom. Now obviously you can do this in a voice if you've got soft jaws in a voice. You can clamp it up in a voice like so to hold it in position and then knock the bearing out. That's not a problem. I'm just demonstrating it for you on a block of wood so you can see that you can do this without any special tools needed to service to put new bearings in it. So I'm just showing you on a block of wood, but if you've got a voice and you've got some soft jaws, then you clamp it in the voice without damaging the body in any way. But like I said, just carry on, just tap that round. So once you've tapped it down initially and the bearings dropped out of its seat there, then what you notice is that the bearing won't, won't physically come out because it stops on the next one where the first bearing was because it's the same size as the bearing you've already removed. So what you have to do is seat it in there, just clip it, get it on your finger, pull it up and put it in position and then turn it back over like so and then do the same thing again. Get your punch, put it down in there again and just carry on and tap it like you did for the first time to get it to come out, just gently tap it around to get it to come out of the seat on the of the bearing seat for the first bearing that you removed. So we just keep on tapping it round bit by bit until it comes out of there like the first one did. Right so they have the two bearings there, snap ring and the collar. So that's the contents of the free hub. So now you're left with the empty free hub body. So what you do now is go ahead, clean up all the surfaces, wash it out, make right, sure it's all dry and clean. If you've got new bearings to put in, then obviously make sure you've got some grease around them as well before you put them in and some grease where they're going to sit as well. So I'll go ahead, I'll do that in a moment. But that's basically how you remove your original bearings if they're bad and you want to put some new ones in. So we'll go ahead and we'll get them back in there. Right, so when you're ready to refit your bearings, what you want to do is, first of all, get some grease and put down where the bearing's going to sit in the bottom. It's a light smear in there. And then what you want to do is get your bearings and just put a smear of grease around the edge of the bearing just to help it go in and stop it seizing in there like so and then what you've got to do is like I said before this bearing won't drop in there because it's got to go past the first bearing seat in the top so what you've got to do is get that past there now obviously if you've got a press then you can use a press they're easy enough to make you can make yourself a press no problem all you need is a piece of threaded bar like so a nut and a washer you can just put it up through the middle like so so it's sitting flush on there then you can use A nut and a washer on this end, or if you if you haven't got a press of any kind, and you all you need is a socket. So you get yourself a socket and put over there, and then put the nut and the washer on, and the socket will push it in. So that's one way of doing it. If not, then you can do it without a press at all. So you don't need to buy yourself an expensive press if you haven't got one, and you just want to service it. I say all you need is get yourself a socket. 
like so. Make sure the bearing's square in there. Don't don't hit it in at an angle at all. Make sure it's flush and then start tapping it in. And then you can just start tapping it in. Because this is just going to go through the first seat and then it's going to fall inside anyway. So just gently tapping it in, just check this going in square. So there you go, it's down in there now. Like I said, if you need a press then you can use a piece of threaded bar up through there like so. Put your socket in there and then put your threaded bar through and put your nut on there and then you can wind it in if you need to. So that's easy enough to do. Put that up through like that, through your socket and out the other side if you need to do it that way. If not, then all you've got is a socket, like I said, just use a socket on there. And just carry on, make sure you've got it square in there to start with before you hit it. Then just gently tap it in to place. And you just feel it going in. You don't have to hit it hard, you're just gently tapping it. Like so. And just give it a few more just to make sure it's gone in all the way. Otherwise the circlet won't your snap ring circlet won't fit back in. Just tap it in like that. I say when you're tapping this, you're not hitting anywhere where the rubber seal is. You're hitting on the outside the bearing so it's exactly the same size as the outside like so so you're not doing any damage never hit where the seals are because you damage the bearings you want to be hitting on the outside edge on the metal so once you've got the uh, bearing in like that then what you need to do is get your snap ring before you put that on what I like to do is just put a, a smear of grease down in there over the over the face of the bearing, just to try and help keep some of the uh, the water out, because it's the water that makes these go bad. Water mixes with the dirt, goes in there. And that's what ruins your bearings. So once you're happy, it's in there. Then get your sir clip again, put it on your pliers squeeze it up and drop it down in like so just push it in, make sure it's gone into the groove in there so I have a check Make sure you're happy that it's actually in. And it's sat in the groove there. Just check. You can't just flick the uh, circlet back out again. So you know it's you know it's gone in there properly. Right. So when you're ready to do next bearing on the end here, what you want to do is just get some grease. Just give it a smear around where the bearing's going to sit. Put some bit grease on the outside of the bearing as well. It doesn't harm to put a smear what's going to be on the inside as well. Just coat the inside of the bearing with some grease. Just try and help stop the water getting into it. So that's that. So you can put that down then get your collar spacer. What you want to do is just put a bit of grease on there the end that's going to go down in like so because it just helps to stick it to the stick it in place down in there stop it moving around so much just put it in and it just 
just helps put it in place. Right, so once you've got your collar in place there, like I said, a bit of grease just stuck in there, then you can get your bear in, drop it in, make sure this flush isn't going to go in crooked. I say you can either press it in, or if you haven't got a press, like I showed earlier, then you just get your socket on top of it and gently tap it. Right, so there's the bearing tapped into place. I say it can't go in any more than it has to because you've got the spacer in between, so it will stop. You can't hit it in too far. Make sure then that the spacer collar that was in there is lined up with the bearings, otherwise, when you go to put it on your axle, you wonder why it only goes on so far and it will stop. It's because you've got the collar in the middle there, it's just slightly off of out of line so if it's dead in line with the bearings there it will slide straight on to the axle no problem so that's simple enough how you change the inner and outer bearings for new ones, replace them no special tools needed, you, like I said you can use a bearing press if you've got one to hand, no problem, you can put it in a vice to help you to hold it that's not a problem, I'm just saying that you can use a block of wood, you can use minimal tools and you can change it, your bearings out, you don't need any special tools to do it with. Right, so there's the tools I just used to complete it with. Decent block of wood, soft blow hammer, punch, 18mm socket and snap ring pliers, zero clip pliers. And then all you need on top of that is some, something to clean the free hub with, a couple of new bearings if you're putting new ones in, and, and some grease obviously to put around the bearings and the, and the uh, surfaces. And that's all we, that was all that was required to change it. Right guys, so there's a quick run through for you of how you change the bearings. So if you found the video helpful in any way, remember to give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the uh, channel for more cycle related content. Until the next video, ride safe and I'll see you then.